Welcome to the part 3 of the Pitman Shorthand course. In this video, we are going to have a look at vowels. So in Pitman Shorthand, there are 12 vowels. So let's see how they look and sound. Now it is highly recommended that you focus more on the sound and less on the text so that you can better understand how these vowels are actually sounded and can later identify the correct vowel in any word. So our first vowel is sounded as A. Ah. A ah, as in pa. The next one is sounded as a, a as in may. The next one is sounded as e, e as in v. The next one is sounded as a, a as in all. Next one is sounded as o, o as in go. The next one is sounded as u. U as in two. The next one is sounded as a, a as in that. The next one is sounded as e, e as in pen. The next one is sounded as i, i as in is. The next one is sounded as a, a as in not. The next one is sounded as a, a as in much. Next and the final one is sounded as u, u as in good. Now there is a special phrase for you that you can memorize so you can remember these vowels. And that phrase is pa me we all go to that pen is not much good. Now these vowels are divided into two categories, long vowels and short vowels. The vowels that come in long vowels are pa me we all go to and the vowels that come in short vowels are that pen is not much good. Now let's see how these vowels are represented. So long vowels are represented by a heavy dot and a heavy dash while the short vowels are represented by a light dot and a light dash. So the long vowels pa me we are represented by a heavy dot and all go to are represented by a heavy dash while the short vowels that pen is are represented by a light dot and not much good are represented by a light dash. Alright so now let's look at the vowel places. So a vowel place is a place at which we put a vowel sign on a particular stroke or curve. So before looking at the vowel places for all the vowels individually, you first need to know that what these places are called and how are these places arranged. Now before starting, what I would like you to remember always is that the place of any vowel will be counted from the point where any particular stroke or a curve begins. Now to understand this statement, uh, we're going to be making a stroke. Alright, so suppose if we make a stroke here, like this stroke. Alright, so now if you can just notice, we started making this stroke from this point. Alright, we started making this stroke from this point, then we moved to the downwards direction, and then we ended up making this stroke at this point. Alright, so as we started from this point, so this place will always be called the first place. Now I wrote the number one here because as you can see up here, this first place, this first number simply means the first place. So whenever I'll be writing the number one, then it simply means the first place. And the second number simply means the second place. So whenever I'll be writing the number two, then it simply means the second place. And this number 3 uh, simply means the third place. So whenever I'll be writing the number 3, then it simply means the third place. So you have to keep this in your mind. All right. so as we started making this stroke at from this point, from this place, so this is first place, alright? This will be always the first place. And as this is the middle part of the stroke, so this will be the second place, right? And this is the last part because this is the part where we ended up making this stroke. So this will be the third place. Alright. 
so uh, once again the point is that the place the point or position or place from where we start making any stroke or a curve so that place will always be the first place all right so once again if we make this stroke again like this so as you saw that we just made this stroke and then and here also we started from this point all right so again this will be the first place this will be the second and this will be the third place all right so that's how you number these places on any stroke now these places are used to put the vowels so for example if you have a vowel here and a heavy dot so as we already know that we use a heavy dot to represent our vowel a ah, as in pa because as we studied before so this is our a ah vowel and we just made a heavy dot because we use this heavy dot to represent our a ah vowel as in pa suppose if you make another stroke here like this and now we have to put the vowel on this stroke so as we started making this stroke from this point so if we can put the vowel up here all right now as you put the vowel here on the first place so we will simply say that we just put the vowel on this stroke on the first place all right because as we saw here that this is the first place and here also we saw that this is the first place so we will say that we just put the vowel on the first place now in the same way if we have to put the vowel on the second place so as we already know that this and this is the second place of on this stroke so we will put the vowel up here so now we will again say that we just put the vowel on the second place all right now in the same way now suppose we have to put the vowel on the third place so we will put the vowel up here so again we can say that we just put the vowel on the third place all right so that's how you put the vowels on a stroke now if you look at this stroke again so this was the right part or you can say this was the one side of the stroke all right because this stroke has two side if you make a stroke here again like this then this is the one part this is the one side of the stroke all right and this is the another side of the stroke or you can say this is the opposite side of the stroke all right so here on this stroke we just made these three places first place second place and the third place so the same thing happens on the opposite side also all right which means that on this opposite side this place will be the first place and this place will be the second place and this place will be the third place all right so you have to remember that uh, these vowel places will be on the both sides all right not on just one side so in the same way suppose now if we take a curve like this one all right so again you just saw that we started making this curve from this point so again we will be calling this place always the first place because we just started making the vowel from this position or this place and in the same way this will be the second place and this will be the third place right now this was on the one side uh, same on the opposite side this will be the first place this will be the second place and this will be the third place right now we can take another curve suppose we take a curve like this now this is a l consonant as we studied before now if you notice we started from this point all right so now we'll be numbering these places from this point so this will be our first place and this will be our second and this will be our third same on the opposite side this will be our first place this will be the second place and this will be the third place so now suppose we take another stroke like this line stroke so now this is the k character as we studied before so 
we started this we started making this k consonant or k stroke from this point so we can say that this is our first place this is our second place and this is our third place same on the other side this will be our first place this will be our second place and this will be our third place all right so suppose we take another curve this time like like this curve all right so as we studied before this is a r curve so we started making this curve from this point or from this place so this will be always the first place this will be the second place as this is the middle part of the curve and this will be the third place now same on the other side this will be the first this will be the second and this will be the third place all right so now finally let's take an example of one more stroke so suppose we make this stroke as this is the r stroke or r consonant as you studied before so we started making this stroke from this point so this will be the first place this will be the second and this will be the third same on the opposite side this will be the first this will be the second and this will be the third so as you saw that we just uh, took few examples and this is how these places of vowels actually work all right so this vowel places works the same way on all the stroke and curve all right which means that it will work on this stroke this stroke and the line stroke and this one and uh, the curves like this curve or this curve or you can say this or this all right so this uh, placing system simply works the same way with all the curves and all the strokes so now we will be looking at the vowel places for each vowel individually but before starting there is one more thing that i would like you to remember always which is throughout this course whenever i'll be talking about the vowels i'll not be saying like vowel a as in pa or vowel a as in me or vowel e as in v instead of this i'll be simply saying vowel pa vowel me or vowel v all right so you have to keep this in your mind throughout this course okay so our very first vowel is pa so pa will be on the first place now it simply means that whenever you have to put the pa vowel on any stroke or on any curve you will be always putting the pa vowel on the first place you cannot put the pa vowel either on the second place or the third place you always have to put the pa vowel on the first place now if you still don't understand this then don't worry because uh, we'll be looking into it in detail shortly so again first is pa pa will be on the first place next is me me will be on the second place next is v v will be on the third place next is all all will be on the first place next is go go will be on the second place next is two two will be on the third place next is that that will be on the first place next is pen pen will be on the second place next is 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 will be on the third place next is not not will be on the first place next is much much will be on the second place next and the final one is good so good will be on the third place so now let's look into it practically okay so here we're going to be taking the example of only p and m consonant because if we'll take all the consonants then this video will be too long so we'll be taking just p and m consonant right so first of all we have this pa vowel so we use a heavy dot on the first place to represent our pa vowel so we have this first of all p stroke so we'll be simply putting the heavy dot on the first place on this stroke to represent our pa vowel like this all right so this was on the one side of this stroke now if we talk about the opposite side of the stroke then we will be simply putting the heavy dot like this on the opposite side okay so now we have this m curve so in the same way on this m curve also we will be putting the heavy dot on the first place like this on the one side and on the opposite side like this so we're done with this pa vowel now we have this me vowel so we again use a heavy dot on the second place this time to represent our me vowel on any stroke or on any curve so first we have this p 
stroke so we will be simply putting the heavy dot on the second place like this and on the opposite side like this all right now we have this m curve so the same way on this m curve also we will be putting the heavy dot on the second place like this and on the opposite side like this okay so now we have this v vowel so we use a heavy dot on the third place this time to represent our v vowel on any stroke or on any curve so first we have this p stroke so we will put the heavy dot on the third place like this and on the opposite side like this okay so now we have this m curve so in the same way we'll be putting the heavy dot on the third place like this and on the opposite side like this okay next we have this all vowel so now we use a heavy dash on the first place to represent our all vowel so we'll put a heavy dash like this on the first place and on the opposite side like this all right next we have this m curve so again we will put the heavy dot on the first place like this and on the opposite side like this next we have this go vowel so we use a heavy dash again but this time on the second place to represent our go vowel so we will simply put the heavy dash on the second place like this and on the opposite side like this all right now we have this curve so again we will put the heavy dash on the second place like this and on the opposite side like this all right so now we have this two vowel so we use again a heavy dash but this time on the third place so the third place like this and on the opposite side like this now on the curve the same way like this and like this okay so next we have that so now we use a light dot on the first place to represent our to represent our that vowel so we will simply put a light dot on the first place like this and on the opposite side like this all right now we have this m curve so in the same way we will put the light dot on the first place like this and on the opposite side like this all right next we have this pen so we again use a light dot but this time on the second place so on the stroke like this and on the opposite side like this now we have this curve so on the second place like this and on the opposite side like this all right now we have this is vowel so we again use a light dot but this time we put on the third place like this and on the opposite side like this now the curve the same way on the third place like this and on the opposite side like this all right now we have this not vowel so we now use a light dash on the first place to represent our not vowel so we will simply put the light dash on the first place to represent our not vowel like this and on the opposite side like this and now we have curve so the same way like this on the opposite side like this now we have this much vowel so we use a light dash again but this time on the second place so like this and like this now the curve like this and like this now uh, the next and the final one is good so we again use a light dash but this time on the third place to represent our good vowel so on the stroke like this on the opposite side like this and on the curve like this and on the opposite side like this all right so that's how we put the vowels keeping in mind the correct places of the vowels all right so now we're going to have a look at before and after so what is this before and after well this before and after is a very small concept which is very easy to understand so to understand this before and after we will be making a stroke so suppose we if we make a stroke here like this one so now as we all know that we have two sides in a stroke one is this side and the other is this side so this side of this stroke is before and this side of the stroke is after as we can see here this B simply means before and as we can see here this A simply means after alright so uh, this is the this is our before and this is our after now suppose if we make another stroke like this and now if I ask you to put a heavy dot on the second place before this stroke so where will you put the heavy dot of course here 
right because this is our before so that's why we put the bubble on this side and this is our second place so that's how you put the heavy dot before this stroke on the second place all right so now suppose we take a curve here like this curve and now if i ask you to put a heavy dot on the first place after this curve so where will you put the heavy dot of course here because this is our before and this is our after all right and this is our first place so that's why we put the vowel the heavy dot over here all right so now as you can see the before and after sides of all kinds of strokes and curves so it is strongly recommended that you have a look at each one of them carefully Okay, so I hope you have looked at each one of them carefully and that's all for this part. See you in the next part.